Welcome. It's been a bit quiet for us storytellers this year, so I'm really glad you're here. A Christmas story, you say? Ah, I've got a few. How about the Nutcracker? No, no, okay. Um, ooh, how about an icy story? Da da da, da da da, ba da 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 da. No, no, okay, let it go, let it go. Um, ah, I've got it. How about a classic Christmas story about how the love and kindness shown at Christmas changed one person? I present to you Charles Dickens's A Christmas Carol. Marley was dead to begin with. Not yet. Marley was dead to begin with. And this you must remember, or nothing I will tell you will seem wonderful. Now, when Marley had been alive, he had been business partners with a man called Scrooge. Ebenezer Scrooge. And who was Scrooge? Scrooge is the main character in our story. And he was a tight-fisted, squeezing, wrenching, clasping, mean old man. But Scrooge didn't care. In fact, he liked it that way. Now, Scrooge lived here. In the busy city of London. One Christmas Eve, Scrooge bumps into his nephew, Fred, on the street, his only living relative. Merry Christmas, Uncle Scrooge. Merry Christmas, bah, humbug. Oh, you don't mean that, Uncle. Yes, I do. Every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on their lips should be boiled with their own pudding and buried with a stake of holly through their heart. Oh, Uncle, no! Come spend Christmas Day with me, my wife and friends. No, Fred. Now leave me alone. Soon after that, Scrooge ran into two charity collectors. Are you Mr Scrooge? I am. We are collecting for charity and trying to raise money to help the homeless who suffer greatly in the cold this time of year. Are there no prisons? There are many, sir. Then the homeless must go there. Some would rather die, sir. Well, if they'd rather die, then they'd better do it and decrease the surplus population. The two men ran back into the fog. Scrooge then headed to his office, an icy little place where he sat scribbling in his money book. Bob Cratchit, who worked for Scrooge, was trying to pluck up the courage to ask for a day off. <coughs> uh, Mr Scrooge, uh, tomorrow is Christmas Day. And may I have the day off? And I suppose you'll want to be paid for the whole day. Well, yes please, Mr Scrooge. It's a poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every December the 25th. But fine, have the day off and be here all the earlier the next day. Bob Cratchit went home to spend Christmas Eve with his family. Scrooge also headed home. Scrooge's house was a gloomy pile of stone on a dreary little street. Now I must remind you that Jacob Marley, Scrooge's business partner, was dead. So when Scrooge approached his front door, key in hand, he was shocked to see 
the door knocker of his house, transform into the screaming face of Jacob Marley. Ah! And when Scrooge looked back, it was just a door knocker again. Scrooge ran inside in fear and lit a candle, trying to warm himself around the tiny flame as he heard chains dragging and jangling up his stairs. Scrooge! Jacob Marley! Yes, Scrooge, your long-dead business partner, Jacob Marley. What is this terrible chain you wear? I forged this chain in life through my acts of greed and cruelty. You wear a heavier chain yourself, Scrooge. Speak comfort to me, Jacob. I have none to give. But you may still escape this fate. Tonight you will be haunted by three spirits. Expect the first ghost when the bell tolls And Scrooge ran upstairs and into his bed where he lay listening to the clock. <gasps> when suddenly there was a bright light. Who are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Come. We have much to see. And Scrooge carefully got out of bed and touched the ghost hand. And instantly he flew. He flew out of his window and over the city. And into his past. Scrooge saw his old primary school and he saw himself sat at his desk working all alone on Christmas Day. And Scrooge remembered that he had been forced to spend every Christmas as a child with no friends or family all alone working at school. And Scrooge thought that perhaps this is when he started to dislike Christmas and where he learnt to push people away. No more, spirit, no more, said Scrooge, and he found himself back in his bed again, waiting for the clock. <gasps> When suddenly, from downstairs, he heard the sound of dancing and laughter. Who are you? I am the ghost of Christmas present! No, it's not Christmas present like present. It's present like, um, right now. Like, here, present. I am right now here, present! All right, let's start again. I am the ghost of Christmas present! And I bring you presents! Dancing presents? And Scrooge's first present was to see his nephew, Fred, and his wife and their friends having a brilliant time on Christmas Day. And Scrooge wished he had been more kind to Fred. More presents! And the next present Scrooge got was to see Bob Cratchit walking home with his son, Tim. But Tim was very poorly. 
And Bob Cratchit loved him so much. And the next present Scrooge saw was the whole Cratchit family gathered around on Christmas Day, sat around their very small Christmas meal, but one made with so much love and kindness. And Scrooge wished he had been more kind to Bob, because Bob Cratchit clearly loved his family so much. Tell me, spirit, will Tim live? I'll see an empty chair at the table next Christmas if nothing changes. I believe Tim will die. But so what? If he's going to die, he'd better do it and decrease the surplus population. And Scrooge was ashamed to hear his own words repeated back to him. No more, spirit. No more. And Scrooge headed upstairs back to... No more, spirit. No more. And Scrooge headed back up... No more, spirit. No more. And Scrooge headed... Right, come on. That's it. Get off. You're done. Come on. And Scrooge headed back upstairs and into his bed. Where again he sat, listening to the clock. Are you the ghost of Christmas future? Will you not speak to me, spirit? Yes, I'll come. We have much to see. And the ghost showed Scrooge a group of businessmen and a group of thieves, both talking about someone who had just died. I thought he'd never die. We're glad he's dead. And both groups laughed. <laughs> and Scrooge felt very sorry for whoever they were talking about. And then the ghost showed Scrooge Bob Cratchit walking home. But this time, there was no Tim. And then he saw the whole Cratchit family again gathered around their small Christmas meal. But in the middle of the table, where Tim should have sat, the place was empty. And Scrooge's heart felt heavy because he knew how much Bob Cratchit loved his family. And then the ghost took Scrooge to a graveyard. Tell me, spirit, whose death was it that brought so much joy and laughter to others? And Scrooge walked towards the gravestone. And he saw his own name written on it. Ebenezer Scrooge. No! No! I will learn the lessons of Christmas. I will love it with all my heart and share that love throughout the year. I won't shut out the lessons the spirits have taught me. Please say I may sponge out the writing on this stone. And Scrooge cried and cried and closed his eyes. And when he woke up, he was back in his own bed. The spirit had done it. 
He was a changed man. <laughs> and he rushed to get dressed. And he ran into the street with a huge smile on his face, the first in a long time. And he saw his nephew, Fred. And he hugged him and hugged him and promised Fred that from now on, he would be a better uncle. And then he saw the charity collectors and he promised them a huge sum of money so they could help the homeless. And then Scrooge went to Bob Cratchit's house and he took with him beautiful decorations, a wonderful tree. <laughs> but most importantly, he took with him love and kindness. And Scrooge promised Bob that he would look after Bob's family so they could be safe and loved. And as Tim observed when sat around the Christmas meal, God bless us, everyone. Merry Christmas.